welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Today, kind of a different episode. We are gonna review the Braville Sous Chef 16 Pro. Unbox, never been opened before. We're gonna take it apart, put it back together, and we're gonna run it through a series of tests with some different vegetables and use some different blades, and then we're gonna give you our review on it and let you know what we think. Let's open this bad boy up. I'm gonna lay it on its side because it's a big box. So you can see here, books, that's always a good thing. I can get this thing. Almost killed me, Jamie. Okay. My first ever unboxing. This is extremely heavy duty. So I did a bunch of research when I was looking to buy one of these. And although the Braville was a little bit more on the expensive side versus some of the competitors, the reviews were outstanding. And all the research that I did um, showed it to be an excellent uh, piece of kit. Now, hope you'll be able to see here, this is one of the main reasons why I bought this specific unit. Uh, it's not obviously completely set up, but this is your ultimate disc blade storage system. So because these blades are like razor sharp, I didn't want them just kicking around in a drawer somewhere that somebody would grab them and cut themselves. So that's why I really like the idea of that bad boy there. And what's nice about it as well is it really explains here uh, mini chopping blade, processing blade, dough blade. So it really gives you a breakdown of all the different options. So here is our massive, what do you call that? So that comes out as well. So that's sort of another push plunger. So another reason, another main selling feature for me on this was there's two storage containers in one. So if you don't necessarily need to use the giant one, you don't have to because there's a smaller one inside here. Okay, so I just finished washing everything. No cuts, that's good. So I did want to clarify. So the smaller bowl is good for 600 mils, two and a half cups or 20 fluid ounces. The big boy is good for two and a half liters, 80 fluid ounces, 10 cups or 200, or sorry, 2,600 mils. So what we're gonna start out with here is to try to julienne some carrots. Never done this before. I'm gonna try to put this together sort of sideways so that you can see. So this sort of locks into place there. So that's locked in. So you gotta put this shaft on here and here is our coarse shredder. So it's actually reversible. This is a, you can't, you probably can't read that, but this is the fine shredder coarse shredder. So we're going to try the coarse and that's going to slide on like so. Then we're going to put this on. That appears to be locked into place. It's plugged in. So we're going to turn the power on. Some nice uh, cool buttons here. I guess the timer is if you're going to set a timer on how long you want to run this, which in this case I don't think we're going to need. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Okay. So, we'll use a little plunger here. Carrot number two going in. And one more carrot. Okay. So we're gonna turn the power off and we're gonna take this apart and see how it looks. So we'll take this part off here. One little tiny chunk of carrot left, which actually really isn't that bad. And you can see some really nice julienne carrot, which would be great for a slaw or a salad of some sort. Pop that right off, grab the supplied spatula. There, that's pretty good. I see one little chunk here, but other than that, everything appears to be julienne. Three full carrots and about, what? five seconds, 12 seconds. Let's move on to something else. Now we're gonna try cucumber. So I'm gonna put that shaft there. This here is the, see what they call it actually, the adjustable slicer. So 24 position slicer. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a couple cucumber, super thin, and then stop, adjust the blade, just to see the different variety of uh, blades, or um, uh, heights that we can get. Turn the power on. So 
So, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to take this off. So, as you can probably see, these are like paper thin. So, probably, you probably wouldn't do them ever that thin with cucumber. Maybe you would if you're doing bread and butter pickles, I'm not sure. But um, now I'm going to adjust that blade very, very easily. And you can see here the different positions. And you can see that that was on the lowest. So maybe we'll go to say like around five or six. So I don't know if you can see the, the width of that blade there now. Turn the power on. Get it going. So it takes basically zero effort at all as far as pressure. Basically just put it there and it starts to slice. So let's have a look at those. Really, really nice. I think this would be probably perfect for bread and butter pickles. So if we do a quick comparison here, you can see the difference between the two. I'm gonna adjust it again and I'm gonna open it all the way up as wide as it goes. Snap the lid, hit start. Carefully take the blade off. My view, this would be perfect for a veggie tray. That's the variety, it says 24 different settings. I don't know if you'd notice a difference between one to two or three to four, but there's definitely a difference from the uh, smallest to the middle to the largest. Okay, next up, fresh rhubarb, just picked from my garden. I'm gonna try the, what do they call this, mini chopping blade for the mini chopper in the mini bowl. So the mini bowl actually just sits right inside there. The mini chopping blade goes right over top. Now they suggest cutting this into one inch chunks, roughly. So you turn the power on, and then basically you just pulse it. So that was three quick pulses. Let's have a look and see how it looks. So I think it looks good. So there you go. So a little bit inconsistent with the sizes, but for the most part, pretty good. Now we're gonna try fries. So we got the uh, French fry blade. Oh, we gotta put the shaft on. French fry blade. This one's a little bit different. What we're gonna do, we're gonna snap our lid on and then we're gonna put a, fro uh, a potato in place. Then we're gonna get our plunger in place here. And now we're gonna start it. We'll see what happens. So that took about half a second. So they do say that you could get a little chunk stuck here in the blade, which is pretty accurate, which is fine. So as far as the fries look, not too bad. Kind of a thin cut fry. Plunger ready. I don't even know if that was a second. Pretty quick. Now here's a bigger potato. We'll see how that works. Again, pretty quick. Put another potato in. We're ready to go. So ironically, on the uh, subsequent potatoes, nothing stuck. But if we look here, these are pretty consistent in size. They're pretty thin fries, so they probably wouldn't take long at all to cook. But it does cut potatoes and it does make fries pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna do cheese two ways. The first one I'm gonna use is the adjustable slicer. I have it on setting number two, so we're gonna see how that works. So put that on, so as you see, I have two chunks of cheese here. I'm gonna put the cheese there, and let's see what happens. First glance, kind of made a mess. So it definitely did slice some cheese, actually quite nicely, the ones that it did slice, but it definitely destroyed a lot too. So I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but um, I'm gonna give this a quick wipe out and then we're gonna try the, uh, I think it's called the shredding blade. So let's do that. Gonna try the other cheese now. So you see here in this bowl, this was the slicer. So kind of some mangled cheese and some slices. So now I'm gonna try the coarse shredder. So I'm gonna throw that on there and I'm gonna put our cheese in place, boom. And put our plunger in place and get ready for it. 
because it's not going to take long. So, again, a little caveat here. It's the first time I've ever done any of this. It may take a little finesse. Maybe I'm not even doing it 100% correct. But the first thing I noticed was a pretty good chunk of cheese left here. However, when we take this off, it definitely, and maybe if you had a bigger chunk of cheese, it definitely sliced it quite nice, actually. So, and there is some residual leftover from before, but it does slice it up quite nice. So, what I could tell you, on the pro side, super fast, quick machine, amazing blade variety, amazing blade uh, carrier to keep everything all together, everything has a place. A uh, couple cons, and I could be doing it wrong, the vegetable match stick or the vegetable stick didn't really work that well. Um, the cheese was kind of hit and miss. Maybe if I put a bigger chunk, maybe it would work better. It's a little on the pricey side, but overall, I highly recommend this product. If you're big into cooking like I am and you're big into making big meals or doing food prep and so on and so forth, it's amazing. The adjustable slicing blade, which is this one right here, in my opinion, is by far the best blade. It's super versatile. Allowed us to slice those uh, cucumbers super thin if we wanted or a little bit thicker. So if you're into canning or making pickles or anything like that, which we do in the fall, it's gonna make it a breeze to make pickles. So I can't wait to use it for that. The potato application actually worked a lot better than I thought it was gonna work. It was actually pretty, pretty slick. Let's have them soaking in some water right now and then I'm gonna put them in the oven and see how they turn out. So overall, highly recommend the product. The Braville Sous Chef 16 Pro, amazing product.